Anya here from OurGabledHome.com and in this video I would like to show you our new stove and tell you why I'm so excited about it and what's really cool about it. Some of you who've been following for a while have said, hey, did you get a new stove? And we've had this for over a month now, maybe six to eight weeks, I would have to double check. But I wanted to really use this for a while and see if it held up and if there was anything that I noticed or anything that I thought didn't work so well so I could really give you a thorough and honest review. Speaking of honest and thorough review, for full disclosure, I want to mention that we received the stove at a discount. However, had we not received the discount, we would have still bought the stove and I wasn't asked to do anything or say anything. So everything that I'm saying in this video is just my own opinion. And if you're interested in buying the stove, I'm leaving a link in the description box below this video so you can find out where you can find this. Um, there are some local retailers who carry this stove, but it's really easy to get this online. farmhouse stove is an Ilve range and I had never heard of a Ilve range before. It's an Italian brand that's been around for a while. I've done a little bit of research and really it came up when I was looking for a farmhouse stove and I think this really fits into a farmhouse style kitchen. The reason we bought this one is our previous stove was fine and it was working really well however since I do so many cooking and baking videos we thought that it would be nice to have something a little bit more pleasing to the eye and for me it was really important that this stove has two functions and one is a simmer function and the other one that the um, oven goes down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And before I go a little bit more into the details, let's look at this stove. Like I said, it is an Italian brand. It's manufactured in Italy. I'm gonna move my kettle here. It comes with really heavy duty cast iron grates here that you can take off for cleaning. I'm gonna take this one off as well. And then the burners are really easy. You take the top off and then you can take this brass part off and then this part. And as you can see, there is a bit of a elevated part in the middle, which if you ever have a spillage, it just flows down and away from um, all the igniters and where the gas comes out. And it's pretty easy to clean it up. And then you just put it back together like this. You set this on and a notch here and then you put them back together this is a brushed stainless steel top I wouldn't be too aggressive with scrubbing it what I have found is that whenever I have some spillage or some some fat or oil dripped on it the sooner I clean it up the better and I use something like Bonami and that takes care of it really well. So again, you don't want to be too hard on it because you will actually get little scratches in it and that won't be so pretty. Having said that, when you put the grates back on, you also want to be careful to put them right in here so they don't scratch up the front here and then this one goes into the middle. Um, this is a 30 inch, so it comes with five burners. As far as I remember, this one is 15,500 BTU. These two are 10,500 BTU, and these two are 7,000 BTU, which is plenty powerful. I have actually found that um, this one I use most because I cut here, and then I, you know, I have my pot or my my skillet right here. This one has so much output that often it's a little bit more than what I need. However, this is a dual burner here, so you can. Um, only light the part in the middle 
and that will give you the lowest output. I can't remember what this output right here is. As I said, the simmer function was really important to me because we often simmer bone broth and you don't want to actually boil a bone broth. You want to just have a simmer or when you want to like slow cook something for a long time. So that is why that was important. And I noticed that this company sells a simmer plate, which you simply put here in the middle. You can put it on any uh, burner, but this is really what it's for. And then with this simmer plate, it is a true simmer uh, burner and it won't boil your food. It comes with this little nifty um, hook here. That if this is hot, you can actually touch it. If you're considering buying the stove, I can only recommend buying this because it really makes a difference in the simmering. One thing I do want to notice about lighting the burners is that you will need to wait a few seconds before it stays. If you only let the igniter go for two or three seconds, it won't stick. It's a safety feature. In the beginning, it was something that we had to get used to a little bit, but now we don't even notice it. And I have found that usually if I count to about eight seconds or so, it will it will stay lit. The um, oven down here came with two racks and a rotisserie attachment that we haven't used and I don't know if we're ever going to use it, but it comes with these removable racks. So this oven is really powerful. We've baked breads in it. We have made casseroles. We have made all sorts of things in this oven and I, um, I really enjoy using it. One thing I do want to mention that as you can see, there's quite a bit um, of space here on either side and the inside may be smaller than what you are used to. This is a 30 inch, obviously this um, range comes in different sizes. If you get a bigger size, you obviously get a bigger oven, but for the 30 inch, this is a smaller oven than our previous range. This is about 2.7 cubic feet. So if that is an issue for you, then I just wanted to mention that. For the gas range, this also comes in a dual fuel, so that has different features. This one has a convection mode, a true conventional mode where you get heat from the bottom and the top and a defrost function and a grill or rotisserie function and those have been working really well for us and no problems there. In the beginning I said something about the two requirements that I had for the stove and that was that the oven goes down to about 100 degrees. This one goes to 150 and what happened was when I did my research I didn't notice that the 100 degrees refers to the dual fuel, the electric oven and the gas cooktop and the we have a gas cooktop and gas oven and that goes to 150. So my workaround has been when I need let's say 100 degrees for making yogurt or where it's 100 and 110 degrees I simply turn it to 150 and then I turn it off and then sometime later I turn it back to 150. I have a thermometer in my oven it's not ideal, but it's a workaround that doesn't bother me and um, 150 is still pretty low and I have successfully made really yummy yogurt. So when my husband and I were remodeling our kitchen, we considered either putting an antique stove in there like a O'Keefe and Merritt or Wedgwood or a French farmhouse stove. However, we only had 30 inches of space to work with and a lot of the French stoves don't come in 30 inches and the antique stoves usually come in 33 or 36 inches. So we would have had to cut into cabinet space and counter space and I wasn't ready to do that because space really comes at a premium in this kitchen. I was delighted to find out that this company makes stoves as small as 24 inches and this fit beautifully into our kitchen and I was even more delighted to find out the price tag, which is about half of what you pay for a French stove. So we didn't have to cut into the counter space, we didn't have to cut into the cabinet space, 
and we got a very pretty stove again since I record so many videos we wanted something that looks really nice. So what's also really nice about these stoves is that there is so many ways that you can customize it. For example, so ours comes with five burners. If you get a smaller or bigger size, that may also affect the number of burners you can get. But we chose a true white stove. It comes in an antique white. It comes in, I wanna say eight or nine different colors, but you can also get custom colors you can choose the fittings here we chose the chrome it comes in a brass and it comes in one more color so that you can totally match it to your kitchen and it comes in very many different sizes we had thought about getting the toe cake but the toe cake didn't work for us because it just slides in and with the height that we have for our counters there was too much of a gap between the range and the toe cake so what happened as a result is that our cats were putting their paws in and pulling it out. So that didn't work. What is really cool if you're interested in that is that you can order claw feet or more decorative feet with this range. And we're just probably going to put the same toe cake that we have for the rest of the kitchen cabinets in front of this stove. Another thing what we need to do is finish the counter back here because this range is not as deep as our previous one and my husband's going to cut a piece of the quartz that we used and put that back there so it looks all nice and clean. So again, I think that I covered everything that I noticed and that I love about the stove and that could be an issue for somebody considering this stove. I want to say in conclusion that we absolutely love it. We couldn't be happier and if I had to choose it again, I would totally buy it again. If you have any questions for me about this stove or if you have any comments, please leave them in the description box below this video. I do my best to answer all your comments and questions. And if you found this video helpful, it means a lot to me if you give me a thumbs up and especially if you're new on my channel, I also love it if you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you never miss another video which comes out once a week on Tuesdays. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.